What's going on guys? This is Kill Switch Chronicle number 13. My first negative Toro experience. I have come upon a Toro strategy that's working very, very well. It's giving me a lot of rentals. And I have to say that the majority of my Toro experiences have been positive. I've met some cool, nice people, um, developed two business type deals with two people. I mean, it's been really good. So this is what happened. They wanted to rent the drop top Mercedes. And here's the thing. The drop top Mercedes was in the shop. I fully expected to get this car back last week, but they've been having problems. And one of the problems is with the programming of the headlight, they had to replace the headlight. I had condensation in one of the headlights and I, 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 I knew there was gonna be a problem. And what it did was it, it short-circuited the board where the turn signal wouldn't work and you had to replace the whole headlight to fix the turn signal, 2,500 bucks. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Thought I would get it tomorrow, you know, yesterday. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And it dawns upon me that this guy was supposed to pick the car up at five o'clock. So I message him and let him know that the car is in the shop. And this is something that just outside of my control. And like I said, most of the people on Toro have been very nice, very accommodating, very understanding. Not this clown. This clown went into this whole diatribe and he actually said, you're trying to scam me. Because I was like, I have other cars you can get. And he was like, I don't want, you know, I want a comparable car. And I, I, I began to climb into the psyche of the Toro renter. Number one, this dude was from not from out of town. All my out of town guests have been superb. He was local. He was an AT alien. That was the first strike. And then he didn't want our service. He wanted to come get the car. He, he was very adamant about that. So I was telling him and we were just going back and forth and back and forth. And it's like, you knew this and you just told me. I'm like, and I just copied and pasted. It's like the car's been in the shop for almost two weeks. We thought we would have had it back now. This isn't like something that we were planning on, right? And he got belligerent, he got stupid. I'm on the phone with Toro right now. And at that moment, I was like, I don't wanna deal with this guy. I really don't wanna deal with this guy cause he's an asshole. And then he said, you're trying to scam me. And at that moment, I hit the cancel button. I canceled his trip. And I said, you have a nice day. I didn't get into it. Now, Petty, Petty Glendon wanted to say some stuff. Like, mofo, you couldn't even afford this car. That's why you want to rent it so bad. You couldn't afford neither one of these cars. I didn't say that. I, 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 I actually refrained because right now I have a, five, a perfect 5.0. And I don't know if people can comment if they don't rent the car, but I was like, you know, don't chance it let this clown go, leave him alone. And he's a difficult, difficult person. He's a miserable person. And it taught me something because I'm thinking about taking this car out the fleet and just making it a personal vehicle because it's the party vehicle. People come in Thursday, they leave Sunday. This the last four renters flew in Thursday, left on Sunday and people are always changing their flights. They never want to, like one chick, she left, her plane left at 6.30 in the morning. I was like, I am not gonna be up at 6.30 in the morning. Just leave it in the parking lot, leave the key in the cup holder, and I'll get it later. And that's what happened. But I started to see what was going on. And there was a guy, and he doesn't really get a lot of hits, but this guy, he has some really good Toro game. And he was talking about Toro pushes older cars down in the rankings and promotes newer cars. And I don't know if that's true. If you have any experience with that, please put it in the comments. Let me know. I don't know it's true because I've been doing pretty well with some 2011s. I mean, really, really well. So 
I was just listening to this guy because he was so butt hurt. And he was like, you're trying to scam me and all this other stuff. And I want a comparable car. And I'm just sitting there like, cancel, cancel, cancel. And I really wanted to tell him like, I don't need your funky $302, bro. I really don't need that. And I was like, you know what? Petty Glendon, calm down. Petty Glendon, calm down. Cause I was getting ready to really talk to this fool. But I was like, we're doing well on Toro. We got a perfect 5.0 rating. Don't mess it up because of this clown. And one of the things that I may start doing is not renting to local people. I'm like, if you're a local renter, I have another app where you can rent cars locally because my best experiences have been with people who are from out of town. Consistently, very nice, very upfront, very understanding. There was one guy I was supposed to um, meet at 2.30. Traffic was insane. I didn't meet him at three. Perfectly fine. He was like, oh, we we're just sitting there drinking lemonade. No, no drama, no drama. But this clown, he wanted to do the ATL flex. And he was just like, you know, he was, there was no understanding. There was just complete because I had to keep copying and pasting what I was saying. I was like, do you hear what I'm saying? This ain't like something I planned. And once again, it, it, it left such a nasty taste in my mind. So I mean, I do local rentals, uh, unless on hire car. <clears throat> because hire car, people like show up, they pick up the car, they're gone. Toro people want to have a conversation. Hi, it's Jill. And I'm so happy to be renting your car. I'm gonna take care of it just like it was mine. I, I don't really care. I'm like, as long as you don't wreck the car and you bring it back in one piece, we good. I don't need all this extracurricular language. And I've noticed that the people on Toro are very, very chatty. Really, really chatty, wanna talk about it. And it hit me why they're so chatty. They feel that they're renting from a friend. And I'm going tonight, I'm gonna to put in there that we are a company and we have 29 cars and you will not be hearing from me, blah, blah, blah. Because I think people think it's like, you know, the Airbnb host and the, and the guests and stuff. And at one point it was annoying me because I was used to people with hire car coming, picking the car. It's like the only communication was, where do I pick the car up? Which is understandable. But Toro, like, hi, it's Jill. What's going on? Hopefully you're having a good day. I'll be in town in two weeks and I, I can't wait to drive your lovely car. I'm like, I don't need all that. <laughs> I don't need all that, right? And uh, that really just rubbed me the other way. But once again, I y'all would be proud that I pushed Petty Glendon. I, put, like, I stuffed him back in there. He didn't come out. I didn't say anything cross. I didn't go off like I really, really wanted to because I'm like, okay, because I've been reading that your reviews are, your, are gold and I've got a perfect 5.0 across the board, great reviews from great customer service and this one clown could have potentially messed that up because he was a complete and other asshole. And I was gonna, actually, this is what I was gonna do. I was gonna actually reduce the price of the other car. I was gonna, I was gonna hook him up. See, this is one of the things. Let me, let me tell you some of the stuff I do. Uh, the guy who rented the X5 and the case, it's called the case module. This is the part in the BMW that talks to the keys for the locks and the ignitions, and it, it just isn't working. And a little bit more about that. So I actually reduced the price of the 740 and gave it to him at the same price for the, uh, actually he's renting a car tomorrow. So I be hooking people up. I was gonna hook this clown up, but he came at me like, I'm going, I'm, I'm on the phone with Toro right now. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell your daddy on you. I'm gonna tell your, I'm like, clown, you don't, you don't know who you're talking to. You, you have no clue. The majority of my money, 90% of my money comes from higher car. Like, you know, I have thought about selling the cars that I bought for Toro and just buying more cars for higher car. That has crossed my mind because Toro is, until I implemented this strategy, which I'll be discussing in the rental car course, Toro was slow. I mean, like 
I ran out of the car of the day on higher car. I ran it out. I'm gonna run out probably three of the cars tomorrow. Um, it hard car moves for me, and you're like Toro, you know, that Mercedes it goes out quite a bit. That Mercedes, uh, I feel that I will probably because I got it snoozed right now because it was in the shop, but I got the Mercedes back. And if this guy had been a cool human, a decent human being, he'd be driving around in a drop top Mercedes right now. I was just trying to have a conversation with him. So if the, you know, cause they said we should get the car back today, but we don't know. And they couldn't give me a promise. And I appreciate when people are honest with me cause this allows you to properly set expectations, right? So they did not make any promises, but I called him and he could have picked the car up on time if he wasn't an asshole. And I was just like, cancel, delete, delete, delete. All right, here's what's going on with BMW. To put the case module in, they removed the GPS kill switch. Yes. And I went up there, I because they were supposed to call me and I went up there and I talked to the manager and I seriously impressed upon him the importance of that kill switch and the technician said he could hook it back up. I don't think that he can. This is what I think is gonna happen. I'm gonna get a call tomorrow that we were unable to put that thing back on. And I'm gonna, not, I'm not gonna bliss out the service manager because he has nothing to do with it. I'm gonna like, may I speak to a manager? And I'm gonna demand that they take $1,000 off that bill because I did not authorize them to remove that switch. And like I, I, I had a 30 minute conversation with the manager was like, this is the importance. And then he told me some, I found to be really interesting. People do the same stuff that they do to me. They do it to BMW and the loaner cars. You get a loaner car, you're not supposed to leave the state. He's like, I had a guy last week, uh, we, we, we pinged the GPS. The guy was in Oklahoma and he his car was here, was fixed. And he, he was in Oklahoma doing something. He didn't pick up his car. So we, once again, because I cannot rent that car without that GPS kill switch. And tomorrow, I have, I have $50,000 worth of inventory in my parking lot that I cannot rent out because I don't have the GPS skill switches. I got a S-Class Mercedes, I got a 550 BMW, and I got a sweet 335i. I am not renting these cars out without a GPS skill switch. I'm not doing it. So either BMW is gonna find someone to put that thing back in, or they're gonna cut me a deal. That's one of the things. And I'm, I'm not leaving out there until one of those two things happen. And I get it in writing. Because when I got that message that they removed the Jeep, I was like, you did what? Do you understand? And I went up there. I was like, I was very professional. I was very polite. No screaming, no cussing, nothing like that. I'm trying to get a problem resolved. And you know, I they're gonna work with me. I know this because I have a feeling that they're not gonna be able to put it back in because I've been looking in my GPS dashboard and it has been unplugged. It's not showing up. Last time it communicated with my system was 7.20 this morning. And I am gonna raise all types of holy hell on the, over this and I'm gonna be very adamant about it. And if I have to call the president, if I have to talk to BMW North America, I am, because I did not authorize them to remove that. And I, I was telling the guy all the hell that I went through with these people and not having these GPS kill switches on. So that happened and I was just sitting there. But today was a good day. At the beginning of the day, I had seven cars in the shop. I currently have five and I'm probably gonna get three back tomorrow, which means I'll have two cars in the shop. I may get four back because I'm gonna get two of the BMWs, I'm gonna get the Porsche. The Porsche is almost ready. That Porsche rented out one time on hire car and it's just literally been sitting because I haven't been able to list it on Toro because it has a recall. But this should be solved tomorrow. The guy called me today, I've been calling. I actually went up there. See, th this is something else. When you show up in person, it is hard to ignore you. And I showed up in person at the Porsche dealership and I showed up in person at the BMW dealership. And I was like, you know, cause I was getting ready to go off. Cause I thought that they were skipping over me and we're gonna have a little segue. Half of the technicians at Hennessy Porsche got COVID, half. So they're backed up for weeks 
because I took the car, not last Friday, but the Friday before. So I had my car almost two weeks. And I was, th you know, I was getting, I was feeling some kind of way. And there was a wonderful gentleman by the name of Greg who sat down, explained to me what was happening. And he said, it's unacceptable that they're not calling you back. You know, call me, Joel will be here in the morning. And we got that resolved. So I did not have to lose it on Hennessy Porsche. And I will get my problem resolved tomorrow. And I feel really good about September. We're currently at 13,000 for the month. And we may elk out 2122. Just depends upon how these last 12 days go. Because I have a lot of inventory because like I said, I have cars in the shop. Good part, good story. I had a long-term renter. He had the car for two months. He brought it back in the middle of the night and I was like, it's gonna be okay, G, it's gonna be okay. And I go check out the car this morning. The car is not rented. It was a little dirty and I made $3,500 off this dude and he brought it back with half a tank of gas. I am not gonna trip on that gas when I make 3,500. And the car started up, the car was fine. And once again, it was an older car. This was the first rental for this car. Check engine light was on. I took it to my guys, it needs a tune up. Normal maintenance. The guy didn't do anything crazy. He didn't do anything wild. And I have to get the check engine light off to go ahead and get emissions so I can get a tag for it tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a really, really busy day because it starts off at 8.30 and I'm gonna be taking my cars to get these GPS kill switches. I'm gonna take the BMW 550 because I got a renter for that. And I feel that if I go ahead and get the uh, kill switches on the BMWs, they'll be out this weekend. And then we will, because we currently have 16 cars rented and I have 29 cars. That means I've got 13 cars that are not rented. Uh, the Camry's wrecked, that's not gonna be rentable. I got another Camry that's wrecked that can be rentable. I got the Acura. Uh, I'm trying to find someone to fix this window. That's a little challenging. So those three cars are parked. And yeah, well, the blue Camry will be up probably tomorrow or next week. I'm not like really pressed about that. But out of my 29 cars, I have three that are unrentable. That uh, silver Camry, I can't rent that. And I'm probably gonna buy two more cars to get me to an even 30, 31, end of the month, and go into September with 30, 31 cars. And we will see how that's going to work out because uh, I've not had any drama in the last two weeks. The last, well, the guy that tried to scam me, but that was, that was minor drama because I was able to go ahead and get my vehicle back. I was able to turn it off go get it back. The only thing is he kept the key. And this, this is a problem. And because this vehicle has comfort access, and what that means is when you walk up to it and you touch the handle, it, it opens up. Um, so I went to BMW because I wanted a nice key because the key that I have, it, it has, it'll lock the car and it'll start the car, but it won't open the car because you have to pull a little skeleton key out and put that in there to, you know, and that's just annoying. So uh, I'm getting that done probably tomorrow, get that done, and then we'll roll off into the weekend. But the, I feel that the days of the extreme drama, the animals that rented my X5, you know, player player, that stuff's behind me. I, I don't think I'm gonna have too much drama because I have the GPS kill switches on 15 cars. If God is willing, I will have them on 18 cars tomorrow. So we will see how that goes. And I'm very, very excited because, like I said, last in July, we turned the corner with the GPS kill switches. And I am ready for any BS anyone on Turo can throw me. Because like I said, this guy, he got canceled. He could be riding, well, it's raining, so he couldn't be riding around with a drop top. But you know, you should be really careful who you're talking to. Because um, I felt that he was talking to, he didn't know who he was talking to. Because I was sitting there like, you're not gonna speak to me like that and I'm gonna do something nice for you. That's not gonna happen, bro. That's not gonna happen. But that was my first negative experience on Toro. And 
you know, I don't think he didn't wasn't able to leave a review because I think unless you actually rent the car, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I didn't want to, you know, like I said, I didn't cuss this. I, I, I wanted to say, man, look here. You know why you rent this car? Because that's your dream car and you can't afford it. You can't afford it. You can't afford it because your mama on the welfare. You remember that Eddie Murphy skit? You cannot afford it. You want to you want to lick an ice cream? Psych! Um, I really wanted to tell him something because he's a local Atlantan. And also, I prefer my renters from out of town. They're nicer. They're, their conversation is better. I actually prefer that. And I may not do any local rentals because the local rentals will be a higher car and I'm just not gonna do it on Toro because this guy was weird from jump. You know, it, it was just kind of funky communication. But I'm just sitting there like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We, we ain't doing this today. And I feel that all of the drama that I've had on higher car has set me up for Toro. I don't think there's anything anyone can do on Toro that I won't be ready for. So these three months of going through Beirut, Beirut, that's what we'll call it, has prepared me for other rental car platforms. Like I already know that I prefer out of town guests on Toro because they're just better. They're just better. And I've not, this was my, this was going to be my first local renter. And I'm just like, I don't think I'm gonna do local rentals on Toro. I was like, if you are local, and I'm gonna start putting that, if you're local, you need to go to our hard car site to rent cars locally. Because people get weird on Toro. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So I feel that September is gonna be amazing. I feel that September is gonna be a 30 some thousand dollar month because I'm gonna have my inventory. And this is something else too. I know some of you, have felt that I've been getting ripped off with the repairs and stuff, but I've been getting these repairs turned around really quick. Uh, they were able to turn around the being the black diesel. The diesel is going out to someone who's owned a diesel before. Once again, I, I'm, I'm being really careful. That car has rented out four times on Toro and I fill it up with the DEF fluid. So I'm not really worried about that. And this time it's gonna go on a higher car rental and I think it's gonna be a long-term rental so this guy has rented like four cars from me and he has not brought anything back damaged and you know he's rented a car that had the gps on it and he's not a speeder so i think this is going to be fun um so i feel very very good about where we are now and what i'm going to do first of september is a complete breakdown because september 1st 2021 going to september 1st 2022 is going to be my first year i've been running experiments i've been back testing i've been get collecting data and i feel that i'm ready for prime time and i will go into prime time with the majority of my vehicles come monday because tomorrow i should get two back three four i should get four back so we will see if i get four back because i get four back i can probably rent those out this weekend so I'm gonna roll into September with 27, 28, maybe 29 rentable cars that are fine. Because I, like I said, I know a lot of you feel that I'm getting ripped off with repairs, but this has been my experience with BMWs. Something breaks, you fix it. You typically don't have any other problems for a long, long time. And I'm just fixing it. Whenever a check engine light comes in, I take it to my guy, we work on it, we fix it, we fix it, we fix it, we fix it. We fix it. And I feel that September is probably going to be my month of the least amount of repairs. I feel that that's going to happen in September because I'm fixing stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm doing oil changes. I'm getting taxed. I'm doing all this other stuff. And I, I am really, really stoked about September, October, November, and December. I am stoked about it because I feel that this is going to be really, really good. So that's your kill switch story for today. All right, so let's talk about the corporate papers. We're, we're moving toward the end of the month and a lot of you, I know it happens every time, you're gonna pile in the last two or three days. But what I'm saying is, don't wait. Go ahead, get in the corporate papers because right now, there's three weeks 
of work for you to do in the corporate papers right now. And this is stuff, I don't want you to skip over it. Don't skip over it. Do the work, prepare yourself, and you're gonna be in a really good position two to three years from now. Uh, I was watching a YouTube video where this guy was saying that you can do this, make $10,000 in 30 days. And I laugh because the reality is average person is not gonna make $10,000 in 30 days. An exceptional person might, but an average person, no. An average person can get to $10,000 a month in two to three years, yes, absolutely. But this, this doing it lightning fast, that's just designed to get you to click the buy button. That's what that's for. It's not going to happen. I really don't think it's going to happen. But once again, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your success. What I want you to do tonight is to sit down and I want you to dream big. I want you to write out what you want your life to be like three years from now. I want you to actually go visit the house that you want to live in. This is something I don't think I've talked about, but before I got in the position to buy these cars, I would test drive them and I would go in and it's like, look, I'm not in the position to buy this car right now, but I want to test drive it and let the salesman know. And they're like, cool, here are the keys. Boom. So you could go ahead and test drive your cars you want, visit the houses you want and prepare for your future. I want you to do that tonight. I want you to create a list of what you want three years from now and number it and rank it in priority. So do that for me tonight because this is gonna be a fun exercise because you get to dream, you, let, you get to let loose and you get to look at the possibilities of the future, man. Because your future can be amazing if you choose to make it so. That's all I got for you guys. I will see you later. Corporate papers are below. Go ahead and get it. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.